Welcome. Welcome to the weekly sermon. My name is Reverend Dr. Shari Herring, and I am delighted to be with you. I am just honored that God would choose me to be the vessel to bring you this message today. And so, without any further ado, please pray with me. Most gracious and all-wise God, creator of heaven and earth, Lord, I just thank you. I thank you right now that you have ordained this day, this time. And Father God, you have ordained this medium, that it is being sent out through the internet. Lord, I thank you right now for the souls that will be saved. And Father God, I thank you in advance for deliverance, for healing. Father God, for restoration power. Lord, I thank you right now. And I ask you to allow the Holy Spirit to just have his way in me right now. Father God, no more shari, but only only you, Father God. And Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So once you grab your Bibles, if you would, turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Um, today's message is entitled, Immeasurable Faith immeasurable that is without measure it is unlimited it is overflowing it's bountiful it is faith hebrews eleven six is the focus of scripture for us today and that scripture reads but without faith it is impossible to please him for he that cometh to god must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him all right so Today's scripture is from Hebrews. Hebrews is a, a epistle or a letter. It's written to the Hebrews, but we don't know who the author is. There is no concrete evidence as to who the author of Hebrews is. And so just as a little bit of background, although this writer is not identified, it is believed that he was well respected and also was well known. Also, that the recipients were those who knew him, not only well known around, but knew by those who would receive the letter. The date of the letter seems to be around the late 60s, before the fall of Jerusalem in AD 70. The overall theme of the letter is the divine revelation of Jesus Christ as superior in every, in every respect, and alone is the revealer and the mediator of God's grace. Said by many to have been written by Paul, but we don't know that. And so, today God is speaking to us in the book of Hebrews, specifically honing in on that sixth verse. And that sixth verse again says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them, that diligently seek him. And so today we're going to break that down into three parts. It is given to us, the first focus is on that immeasurable faith. God's word says that we are to focus in on verse 6 for this particular sermon tonight. And so what he is saying to us in verse 6, broken into three parts, of this particular scripture. The first part is, but without faith it is impossible to please him. Now, as we look at Hebrews 11, starting at the first, first verse of that chapter, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evident, evidence of things not seen. We do not see God, but he is there. We believe. That's why we're called believers. Hallelujah. It is easy to believe what we see. That's not faith. That's called witnessing. The only one we have to please is God. Somebody right now just got... Um, somebody just now got liberated because the only person that you have to please is God. You don't have to please anyone else. So that should take that monkey off your back. Thinking that you have to please everyone or even have to please yourself. The only one you have to please is God. And all you have to do in order to please Him is have faith. 
Have faith in his son, Jesus Christ. Have faith in the finished work that Jesus did on the cross for you and for me. Have faith that God loved us so much that he sent us Jesus Christ so that we can have a right to the tree of eternal life. Hallelujah. God is so wonderful that he is the one who gives us that faith. All we have to do is ask. All we have to do is believe. And then all we have to do is receive. He will not only be the one who gives us faith, but he is faith. He is the author, that is, he's the one who wrote faith, and the finisher. He is the one who died on the cross for us. So he is the author and finisher of our faith. All we have to do is receive it. All we have to do is believe his holy word. All we have to do is believe his holy scriptures and know that God is the one who is the one that is keeping us. He is the one who is the almighty God. He is the one who has given us faith to have faith in him. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. He is the one who has given us faith to have faith in him. How good can that be? He is the one who has done everything for us. He gave us his son. His son died on the cross for us. And then he gives us the faith. He gives us his Holy Spirit to comfort us, to guide us, and to lead us into all truth. And because of that, God has done everything. All we have to do is believe. Have faith. Have faith in God. Hallelujah. Now Hebrews 11.6 has a second part, that middle part of the scripture there. He says, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. So if you're going to come to God, you have to believe that God is the one who has done all of these things for you and not you yourself. All you have to do is believe. Have that faith. Now, for by, and in that second verse it says, for by it the elders obtained a good report. The good report is that they please God by their faith in Him. Hmm. Starting at that fourth verse in Hebrews 11, it says, it actually outlines the testimonies of faith or the great heroes of faith or it's called the hall of faith. Each and every one of them, it says, by faith, Abel. By faith, Enoch. By faith, Noah. By faith, Abraham. By faith, Isaac. By faith, Jacob. By faith, Joseph. By faith, Moses. By faith, Rahab. By faith, you and I believe in Jesus Christ. By faith, you and I believe on God. Everything that he has told us in his word, his promises are true. All we have to do is believe. Hallelujah. That's called immeasurable. God wants us to have faith beyond limits. He wants us to believe every word that he has said in his holy scriptures. Every jot and every tittle. That's every mark and every accent. Every word, every letter. We are to believe God's word because he is the one who is the author of his word. Hallelujah. So you may be saying now, what is faith? She's proclaiming this and she's telling us to have faith, but what exactly is faith? Well, let me simply break it down to you. God's promises are true. And in God, all of his promises are yea and amen. That yea and amen is Jesus Christ. And so when you're fully persuaded that you have no doubt in your mind that it's Jesus Christ who is the one who is the author and finisher of your faith, that you have faith in God, then you are fully persuaded. But there's a way that you become fully persuaded. But let's first of all talk about Abraham. How do we even get to faith? Because before we can say we have faith, we have to have an object of faith. And the object of our faith is Jesus Christ. And so Abraham had the object of his faith was God. He knew that God would send his son. We knew that he knew that because he had to have faith to offer up Isaac. Isaac was the only son that he had, and that he, well, not the only son he had, Isaac was the son that he had that God had promised that would come. And so when God asked him to offer him up, God, when God asked him to offer him up, Abraham 
had faith in God that God would send some type of way or resurrect him from the dead. He knew that the promise that God had given him was in Isaac. And so even though he was offering him up, he knew that God, he believed God, he had faith in God. He was fully persuaded that God would be the one to do what he needed to do to make that seed go through Isaac. Mm. God is so good. He is so wonderful. And because of Abraham's faith in him, he was the one that God chose to have his seed go through so that Jesus Christ would come through the lineage of Abraham. Mm. He is also called the father of faith. We find that in Genesis 22, 15 through 18, it tells the story. And an angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thee, thy seed as the stars of the heaven. And as the sand upon which is upon the seashore, and thy seed sh shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Now, remember I was telling you it has three parts to this sermon tonight. And so the first part was, number one, we have to, first of all, without faith it's impossible to please God. Second, for he that cometh to God, if you're going to come to God, you have to believe that he is. When you believe that he is, then you're going to obey him. Abraham obeyed God. That let God know that he believed who he was. Hallelujah. Listen to me. God is saying today that he wants you to believe in him. Have faith in him. Obey what he tells you. Because you have faith in him, you're going to obey him. Hmm immeasurable faith. Don't put any limits on your faith and watch God work it out in your life. All you have to do is have faith in Him and then obey His voice. Obey His voice and do what He commands you to do. Each and every one of us has something that we are to do. We fit nicely together in the body of Christ and so today do what God is calling you to do. Have immeasurable faith. Unlimited faith. In God. Hallelujah. Third. Part three. Immeasurable faith reaps God's reward. Going back to our focus scripture today. Hebrews 11, 6. And that he is a rewarder. This is that last part. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Because of diligence of faith, God rewards us. Let's look at chapter 11 of Hebrews, verse 32. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, and of Barak, and of Samson, and of Jephthah, of David also, and Samuel, and of the prophets, going down to that 33rd verse, who without faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Okay. What he is saying, the writer of Hebrews is saying here, that he doesn't have time to continue on with all of the great examples of faith throughout the Bible. He is leading us, and hopefully you are being encouraged today to pick up your Bible, no matter what version it is. Hallelujah. Pick up your Bible and read what God's Word has to say so that you know who those great faith people are. And then all those heroes of faith will stir up something on the inside of you. And especially the Holy Spirit will start working on the inside of you so that you will have even more faith because we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. Hallelujah. So when you have that faith in God, what He will do is He will make sure that you are rewarded. What the writer of Hebrews is saying here, who, who through faith subdued kingdoms, that was a reward. Wrought righteousness, that was a reward. Obtained promises, that was a reward. Stop the mouths of lions. Now you know Daniel knew that was a reward. Hallelujah. Quench the violence of fire, 
That was a reward. Escape the edge of the sword. That was a reward. Out of weakness were made strong. Wax violent in fight. Turn to flight the armies of the aliens. Those were all rewards of God because they were diligently seeking Him. God is the rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Have that immeasurable faith today. I questioned the scriptures early on and I said, God, how can faith be in the hearts of these heroes of faith before Jesus even came about? And so, before Jesus died on a cross for us, before Jesus Christ was even born. And so he answered it for me as he will answer you. If you ask questions of the scripture, God will ask, answer your questions for you. And he answered it using verses 39 and 40 in Hebrews 11. By faith, the Hebrews 11 heroes look forward to Jesus coming to save them. Today, what we do is we look backwards at what Jesus has already did. By faith. By faith. They look forward to Jesus. By faith, we look backwards to what Jesus already did on the cross. Hallelujah. Each one of us was looking to Jesus for our salvation. Whether they back then were looking forward or we today looking backwards, we're still looking to Jesus, our Savior. He is our salvation. He is actually our faith. We have faith in Jesus Christ because He is who we preach about. And so God's Word tells us to preach that Word of faith. And so that's what we do. Have measurable faith. God loves you and He invites you into His family. He wants you so much to be in His family. He wants you to be called His son. He wants you to be called His daughter. All you have to do, though, is believe. Believe in His Son, Jesus Christ. And so you can be with Him eternally. It's all about your salvation. It's all about you living with hope of glory right here on earth. Because we're not here forever. We're just passing through this earth. But our hope should be in glory in heavenly places heavenly places where Jesus is because he is our savior he is our salvation I thank the Lord today that he is the one who came and died for us the only God could send God to save us hallelujah and I thank him on this day that you have this opportunity right here and right now to receive him it's so simple you have to confess faith begins in your heart Romans 10 tells us, if you look at verses 8 through 10, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is, the word of faith, which we preach. That's Jesus Christ. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt not maybe, but shall. That's receiving it personally. You shall be saved. Four, with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So, then faith cometh by hearing. That's cha that um, same chapter, Romans 10, verse 17. So, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing. By the word of God. I pray that you are fully persuaded. Please do not enjoy the pleasures of sin for this short season on earth. And forfeit your eternal, eternal heavenly home. So that you will have pleasures forevermore. This short season of your life here on earth. This span of life is so short when you compare it to all of eternity immeasurable faith. Accept the invitation today. Confess with your mouth, Lord Jesus, save me, a sinner. Please say it with me. Lord Jesus, save me, a sinner. I believe you shed your blood on a cross and died for my sins. I believe that you are now seated at the right hand of the Father and that you are my Savior and you are my Lord. Forgive me today. I make you my Lord and my Savior this day. 
If you said that with me, I thank God for you. I bless the Holy Spirit for you and your being. And I welcome you into God's family. God bless you. May he keep you and forever smile on you. Now, please, make sure you read your Bible daily. Pray to God to lead you and guide you and that His Holy Spirit comforts you every day of your life. Hallelujah.